Let's close our eyes for prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you this morning. We bless your name because of your great promises that will never fail. We ask in Lord this morning that will be mighty in our midst in Jesus' name. That the covenant you've made with your people, that covenant you will fulfill this morning in every life, in every family, in the whole church in Jesus' name. If the leaders are strong, the church will be strong. If the leaders are well, they'll have all that they need to do and they'll have all the instruments they need to have to be able to help the church to be well as well. Oh Lord, we're praying that this healing virtue will pass into the body of every minister and of every family of the ministers in Jesus' name. We're praying, oh Lord, that today you'll magnify the name of Jesus. And our feet will stand on solid ground, the solid ground of the promises of God that will never fail. Be magnified, O oh Lord, this morning in our midst in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. <clears throat> We're looking at Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. Today we're considering the healing covenant and Ezekiah's healing. The healing covenant for the people of God. And then we're going to see how one of those children of Israel, a king for that matter, Ezekiah, how he became healed standing upon the terms and the conditions and the promises of that healing covenant. We're looking at Exodus 15, 26. And said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, I will do that which is right in his sight. I will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which are brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. The healing covenant. When we mention a covenant, we're mentioning a testament. When we mention a testament, it's a divine statement. And it's a will. It's a contract, it's an agreement, it's a bond, it's a treaty, it's a pact, it's a promise that is signed and sealed with God's own name. I want you to look at this word, testament, and always have it in your mind, a testament is a covenant. And when you talk about his testament, for you to understand, I want you to just do a little thing here. And then what I want you to do is to take, you look at the word testament in English, T-E. That's the first thing. Then you have S-T-A. And then you have M-E-N-T. I want you to take the S-T-A. And just lift it up like that by itself. S-T-A. And bring it to the back to begin the word. Then you are going to have S-T-A and then T-E-M-E-N-T. You are going to have statement. Which means then, a testament is a statement. But that's not a statement from man. It's a statement from the Almighty God. And when the Lord issues out a testament, a statement, it stands forever. From that point on, that the Lord issued out the divine statement, it becomes His will. And when you think about it, a statement, a divine statement, a testament, and it is His will. And many times whenever God says, I will. Pharaoh may say, I don't know who, who that is, but the Lord will. And it may be that the Canaanites who want to enter the land of Canaan, the promised land, and all the Canaanites bind themselves together. And they are fighting one single word, will. And all the fighting, and all the opposition, and all the contradiction cannot cancel that word, will. And it may be that God is appointing David as a leader, appointing David as a king. And then Saul, with all his army, may fight against that word, will. And he can never overcome, because God says, I will. And it may be that God wants to deliver the children of Israel out of the land of captivity. And he says, Jeremiah, go and tell them. Isaiah, go and tell them. I will. And once he says, I will, there is not a Belshazzar, there is not a Nebuchadnezzar that can keep them back because God says, I will. And that's the way I want you to look at this word this morning. The will of God, the statement of God, his testament coming from heaven. 
Do you realize what Jesus said upon this rock? I will build my church. And the Sanhedrin had that and he said, never, not here. And all the Pharisees and the Sadducees had that and he said, where? Not here. And Jesus said, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. And all the enemies of righteousness, all the enemies of God, of the divine will, they stood against that will. But God has said, I will and he will. I said he will. Because a testament is a covenant. That is a divine statement. And it is the will of the almighty God. And it's a contract he will never break. It's an agreement he has with his own people. It's a bond. It's a treaty. It's a pact. And it's a promise that is signed and sealed with God's own name. Look at it again. And said, if thou wilt, diligently hack to the voice of the Lord thy God. I will do that which is right in his sight. I will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. Here comes the promise of God. Here comes the benefit and the profit for the people of God. Then he said, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. God made covenants with men, stating the promise and stating the conditions. And he watches over those covenants and the terms and the conditions and the promises of the covenants is omnipotence backs up and ensures their fulfillment now Ezekiel became sick and he remembered the covenant this morning you remember the covenant and it's going to be fulfilled in your life in Jesus name the moment you stand to pray you don't even have to you know do anything and you just say I'm standing on the promise of the covenant sickness not in this temple infirmity not in this body all the attacks and afflictions of the devil is not going to remain in this body of mine today and it is gone in Jesus name the three points we're going to consider number one the covenant of healing the covenant of healing number two the case of Ezekiah the case of Ezekiah number three total cure and healing I have got it I said I have got it Number one, the covenant of healing. It's right there, the covenant that he made with his own people. Exodus 15, 26 again, and he and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandment and keep all his statutes, then he said, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. What are those diseases that come upon the Egyptians? It means upon the people that do not know the Lord. When you say the Egyptians in this text, can I explain to you what it means? Now, the children of Israel have been in the land of Egypt. And the Egyptians have been in the land of Egypt. And then Almighty God said, let my son go. My people go. The people then that went, the people that left and the people that left Egypt behind them and they came unto the Lord. Those are the people of God. All the people that are left behind, they are the Egyptians. And as I think about that today, who are the people that are the children of God? The people that responded to the word of the Lord, come unto me all ye that labor. And a heavy laden, I will give you rest. All the people that have gone out, come out from among them. And be separate, says the Lord. And then I will receive you, I'll not touch any unclean thing. I'll be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. All those people that have responded to the word, come out. Come unto me. Come up higher. All those people, they have come out of a particular place. Out of where? Out of the world. And the people that are left behind in the world, those are the people here. What are the diseases on them? You know, all the diseases on them. Where do they take them to? If you go to any hospital, you'll find all those diseases that have come on the people that are still remaining behind. The people were left behind in the world. Those are the people. And you see the thing that's on them. And none of those diseases they are taking to the hospital every day will ever be on your body. Rheumatism is gone. I said cancer is gone. 
I said ulcer is gone. I said all the pain in your body this morning because you are not there anymore. You are not in the world anymore. You have come out. When you came out, you left your sickness behind. When you came out, you left your infirmity behind. And those things will never come upon you again in Jesus' name. In Exodus chapter 23, you will see the continuation of the covenant of the Lord, the healing covenant, the covenant of blessing and the covenant of healing. It tells us Exodus chapter 23, verse 25. And you shall serve the Lord your God. That that's what you are doing. That's why you are here. You are all the servants of God. And you are serving the Lord in a higher capacity. And you are serving the Lord in a better way than the rest of the people, even than the rest of you who are believers. You have separated yourself to the service of the Lord and the benefit of serving the Lord will be upon your life. And ye shall serve the Lord your God and ye, he shall bless your bread. I said he shall bless your bread. And he shall bless thy water. Why? Bread and water. Bread and water. And bread, that's your meal. The food you take. And how many of you know that uh, there are many diseases that come to us by what we eat. And then the Lord was saying, I know how diseases come. One, you have left some diseases behind. That is, the diseases of Egypt, you have left it behind. When you left the idolatry of Egypt, when you left all the uh, pornography and all those things of the world, you left all the diseases behind. But how diseases can also come, diseases can come through what we eat. And then the Lord said, even your water, your bread, I will bless. How about your water? You need to understand at that time. That they were going on in the wilderness. And they might see a pond. And they want to drink the water there. And who knows all the germs that may be there. And the Lord said, as we're moving on. From this land, and you're crossing the wilderness. And you go to the land of Canaan. All the years you are going to spend on the way. Any water you drink, it is blessed already. I said it is blessed already. All the germs are killed. All the diseases are taken away. And what you eat and what you drink will not be a problem unto you anymore in Jesus' name. I don't eat this. I don't eat this. I don't eat it. Go ahead. All you eat is blessed already. If I eat this, I'll be sick. If I eat this, my body will be scratching me. If I eat this one, why about the covenant? Because the healing covenant assures us the Lord is going to bless your food. And the Lord is going to bless your water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. From the midst of thee. I said from the midst of thee. Uh, well, when you think about the midst of thee, the very center of your life, where is your heart? Where is that? That's your heart. And there are some people that have heart diseases, heart attack, heart failure. And when you go to the hospital and you're doing medical tests, they're going to ask you, what are the peculiar problems in your family? How did daddy die? Heart attack. How did mommy die? Heart attack. In the midst of in your very heart, that heart attack is taken away. I said it is taken away in, in your very center of your being about your kidney, about your lungs, about all the internal organs there. I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Well, when you think about it in another way, even our brain can be the midst of thee. Because all the nerve centers and all the, uh, everywhere, uh, the, the, the things we do, we think in our mind. And our brain is a, is a central point in our lives. And it says, I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. You will not have mental problem. You will not have a demonic problem. Because right from your brain, he has taken the disease away in Jesus' name. And in your blood vessels in the midst of thee, he will take sicknesses away in Jesus' name. You are well. I said you are well. It is well with every one of us in Jesus' name. And there shall nothing cast their young. Hold on to that. You will not have miscarriages anymore. Nor be barren. You will not be barren anymore. In the land, the number of thy days I will fulfill. You will not die young. I said you will not die young. Where are the people I'm talking to? I said you will not die young. God will have fulfilled that promise in your life in Jesus' name. And I will send my fear before thee. And will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. I will make all thine enemies. How many of them? I said how many of them? I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. 
And you know, some people, they have to fast about 14 days, 21 days, 40 days, 70 days, so that they'll be able to overcome one enemy. And after they have fasted about seven days, and they say, uh huh, I saw it in the dream. That enemy is conquered now. They start another fasting for another seven days because there's another enemy. And then when that enemy is conquered, then they see another enemy again. Somebody shows up in the dream, and ah, they have come again. They start fasting again. And then after they think, they never see that in a dream again. Another enemy shows up again, and they are fasting and fasting and fasting every time. And we ask them, we say, friends, what's happening to you? You are getting lean. Ah, you said this world is not an easy road. I have many enemies and I'm trying to conquer them. And we say, How are you trying to conquer them? Uh, they say, You know, when I fast and pray, because this kind goes not out but by fasting and praying. And I'm fasting. I said, Your enemies are no more destroying, you are destroying yourself. And you can enter enjoy the blessings of God. You cannot sleep at night. One o'clock, you wake up, you wake up, bind them, bind them, bind them. What are you binding? For me, I am at liberty. For me, I am free. Because the Lord said, He will deal with them. I will deal with them. I will be handling the work of God. I will be preaching the gospel. I will be reading the Bible. I will be singing the songs of Zion. And then, the Lord will be dealing with my enemies. And they are defeated. I said they are defeated. In the dream, they are defeated. In the day, they are defeated. In the night, they are defeated. In the year, they are defeated. All this year, not my word, from this day, all throughout this year, you will, you will be progressing in the presence of your enemies. Because he sets his table before me in the presence of my enemies, and then he anoints my head, he fills my cup, and my cup runneth over. I said your cup runneth over. I will put my fear before thee. I will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thine enemies, I'll make them turn their back before thee. This covenant the Lord has given us, these promises the Lord has given us, will they be fulfilled? <laughs> and will they be fulfilled today? Yes. I about this year? All through your life, the promises are yes and amen in Jesus' name. We're looking at Psalm 89, Psalm 89, reading from verse 34. Psalm 89, verse 34. It says in verse 34, My covenant will I not break. Nothing can make the Lord to break the healing covenant. My covenant will I not break. My covenant will I not break. Have that in your mind today. And be very sure in your mind today, you are healed already. You are well already. Your sicknesses are taken away already. Your infirmities are gone already. And the attacks of the devil upon your life, it, it's just a joke. It's a joke. The devil is trying to play a kind of game. And he's trying to make you say, I am sick. And when you're in agreement with the devil, you put yourself in trouble. When you're in agreement with the devil, I am dying. I am sick. It killed my daddy. It killed my mommy. It's getting at me. The enemies will never leave me alone. Uh -huh. The devil says, all right, you understand? You know that I can break that covenant, and you accept I'm breaking that covenant, and you agree I'm breaking that covenant. Turn around and say, devil, what have I been saying? Those are not my words. Those are your words you try to put in me. I reject them. I am well now. I reject them. I am healed now. I reject them. I am made whole now. When you come into agreement with the almighty God, God will fulfill that word in your life in Jesus' name. Because my covenant will I not break. Nor alter the thing that is gone out of my leaves. The promises are here today. And they will not fail in Jesus name. Let's see how Ezekiel applied this promise to himself. The case of Ezekiah. In 2 Kings, this point number 2. The case of Ezekiah. In uh, 2 Kings chapter 20. 2 Kings chapter 20. I'm reading to you from verse 1. And uh, you need to notice everything that took place here. In 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1. In those days was Ezekiah sick unto death. He was sick unto death. And that means the sickness started. And Ezekiah just, just went on doing his work. Doing his normal business. He didn't think it was anything serious. And you know that many times in our own lives too, there are times we don't deal with a problem when it is still there, when it is still young, when it is still small. And then we just say, well, it's a small problem, it will go. No prayer. You don't go back to the covenant. You don't go back to the promises of God. Oh, it's a little pain, I can endure this. What are you going to endure it? Oh, it's a little sickness, this one. I can get by with this. I can still do my work. I don't mind. Why don't you stand on the promises immediately? And why don't you claim the benefits of the covenant immediately? Why do you allow uh, the, the disease to increase? 
Why do you allow it to come to this stage that you are now sick unto death? But even then, even though it has come to this stage, the moment you realize, and the moment you turn around, and the moment you say, this is not for me, it will not be for you. I said it will not be for you. In those days, was it can seek unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. How about that? How about that? It's like uh, the Lord was saying, Ezekiah, I can go, come home now. Ezekiah, set your house in order. Now, you need to understand. There are things that happen that try to contradict the covenant the Lord has given you. And the Lord is going to give you the choice. Because he says, I leave before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose. Make your choice. You want to be well? Make your choice. You want to be made whole? Make your choice. And you want to still live more because you still want to serve the Lord? Make your choice. And Paul the Apostle made his choice. He said, and between two, two opinions, whether to depart and go to be with the Lord, which is far better, but to remain is more profitable for you. What are you choosing, Paul? Well, I know what I choose is what the Lord is going to give me. I choose to remain for your benefit. Make your choice. You make the choice to be well this morning. You make the choice to be whole this morning. You make the choice to be healed this morning. And your choice will be given unto you in Jesus' name. And you know, you give up your benefit in the covenant. When you say, I'm even tired of this. I think it's better to live now. I think it's better to die. This is too much for me. I cannot bear this again. At that time, you're looking at yourself. You're not looking at the covenant. And you're pitying yourself. You are not planting yourself solidly on the rock of ages that will never move. At that time, you, you are regretting. Instead of receiving the promises of God and saying, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of the kingdom. I'm a worker in his vineyard. And I am a servant of the Lord. And the healing covenant is for me. And because it is for me, I am going to stand on it. Don't get tired. Everything will be well. I said it will be well. Now when Isaiah came, Isaiah just said, This is sickness unto death. This is a terminal disease. We don't know what it was. You can begin to think in your mind what it could have been. All we know it is that it was a terminal disease. And maybe the doctors might have told you that you have a terminal disease. This one, it kills people. Don't take it lightly. It kills people. And when they say that, they are just telling you that you are like Ezekiah. And can you pray like Ezekiah? Can you stand on the word of God like Ezekiah? And you will. I said you will. The eyes, uh, the eyes of the prophet said, For thou shalt die and not live. And then in verse 2, I like this. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now. Remember now. Remember now. What's it to remember? If you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, that's what I've been doing. Remember me, O Lord. And you will hack into the voice of the Lord your God. And you will keep all his statutes and all his commandments. You know that's what I've been doing, O oh Lord. Remember, look at your record and see my record there. I am saved. I've come out of the world. I'm not one of them anymore. And I'm doing my best with all my heart. Everything I know to be right to do in the word of God. That I've been Remember now. Remember now how I have walked before thee. In truth and with a perfect heart. And I've done that which is good in thy sight. Check up the records, Lord. You will see my record there. I have come out of the world. I have come out of their pollution. I have come out of their idolatry. I'm serving you. Every day, you'll find my record there. I'm doing my best on serving you. And I'm directing the kingdom of God in your will according to your word. Remember that I've done that which is good in your sight. And Ezekiah wept so. Ezekiah wept so. Uh, he was weeping, saying, ah, Oh, Lord. Well, everything I've done be forgotten. And will you forget your covenant? I know you are a faithful God. Is there something I'm missing somewhere? I know you have, you have saved me. And I know that I belong to you. How can it be? You must remember. And then we're told in verse 4. And it came to pass. A four before I was gone out into the middle court. That the word of the Lord came to him. And saying. Well, let me stop there for a moment. This is good. This is beautiful. Isaiah said, now you will die. You will not live. And then he did not wait for Isaiah to ask any question. He turned back and he was going. And I want you to picture in your mind how long time that takes. 
how long it will take for Isaiah to leave him. And he came to deliver a serious message. He came to deliver a message to tell the king, you are dying. And I'm going to, I'm going to pray for you. Because the Lord told me to tell you, you are dying and you will not leave. And then he turned back, he was going. And as he was going, why? He got that as he got to the court. Even before he got to that court, to the middle court. How long will that take? Will that take two minutes? Will that take five minutes? Just a short time. And then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. And the word of the Lord came to him saying, go back to this man. See how God answers prayer. In a few minutes, the prayer has been answered. And the Lord is telling you today, while you are still speaking, I will answer you. While you are calling upon the Lord, I will answer you. When we finish the prayer, before the people who want to go to the other side of the camp, before they get there, your miracle has gone to you. And your miracle is confirmed already in Jesus' name. And while the people that are going to the toilet, they rise up after we finish, they are going to the toilet. Before they get there, you've got it in Jesus' name. You see, this God is a covenant-keeping God. This God is a marvelously good God. And it says, turn again and tell Ezekiah, the captain of my people, thus says the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer. Just that, I have heard thy prayer. Those five words are greater than 10,000 other, 10, other words. That's why Paul the Apostle said, I'd rather speak just those five words, more than 10,000 words in a language I cannot understand. It says, I have heard thy prayer. And all through this day, while you are moving about, remember the word of the Lord, I have heard thy prayer. And while the devil is trying to make a fool of himself, trying to put something back on you, remember the word of the Lord, I have heard thy prayer. When the old thought will come back to you again, ah, this thing is starting again, remember, I have heard thy prayer. When somebody is asking you the question, ah, I, I came to your house the other time, and I saw that you are not well. How are you now? Remember before you answer, I have heard thy word. When you go back to your cell anywhere, and then you remember, I want to show this extra to the pastor. When we finish here, there is a congress. I want to tell the pastor, pray, pray, pray for me very well. Pastor, look at the x-ray. The doctor gave me, your daughter is dying, and your, your child is dying. And uh, you know, the worker that you, you, you really have confidence in, they say, I am dying. You will not die. I said you will not die. Remember those five words, I have heard thy prayer and you are healed in jesus name and then the lord said i have seen thy tears to you i have seen thy tears he knows your concern he knows your heart he knows what you are going through i've seen thy tears and then he said i will heal thee i will heal thee i will heal thee and when god says i will that's it it's done i said it is done and then we're told here on the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the lord and i will add unto thy days how many years uh -uh. a five minutes prayer can add 15 great years to our lives that's prayer that's prayer and that's the kind of prayer we're going to pray today every time you pray and you're standing on the covenant ground every time you pray and you're standing on the promises of god god will add the blessing to your life it will add the healing unto you. It will add the goodness of the Lord unto you. And this morning, your prayer will add something good to your life in Jesus' name. And he said, I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for my name's sake, for my own sake, and for my servant David's sake. As you look at Ezekiah in the story I read to you now, can I just show you some seven things? Number one, he will seek unto death. Seek unto death assuring us that no matter uh, the gravity of your sickness and the problem that you have the weight upon you seek unto death number two stood on divine declaration he stood on divine declaration oh lord that's not your promise that i would die like this how old am i that i'm going to die at this time do you remember how old was my father before he died do you remember how old david was and you know that i'm looking back to david all that he did that man was a great warrior and then even though he fought many battles, and every time, even till old age, he was still fighting the battles of the Lord, he died in a good old age. Am I going to die this time? He stood on divine declaration. And that's what the Lord is telling you to do. Number one, you might have been sick. Number two, now, you stand on the divine declaration. That I will not put the diseases of Egypt upon you, but I will definitely, I will heal you. Number three, he sought deliverance from death. He said, no, I will not die. I say it. He didn't even say, let's agree together. 
You didn't even say, let's pray about it. You just declared, I was going to die. And then you left. No, okay, you can go your way. He sought deliverance from there. You seek the face of the Lord. And you seek deliverance from whatever calamity is pronounced upon your life. Whether it is pronounced by false prophet or even by good prophet. You are going to get delivered in Jesus' name. Number four, he stated his desire and defense definitely. His desire, Lord, not me. I will not die. That message coming from Iceland, no, that's not what I want now. I want to live, and you will live. He stated his desire, and then he stated his defense. He said, Lord, remember now, I have walked before thee with all my heart, with a perfect heart, and I've done that which is good in thy sight. And he wept so. Then, number five, he silenced the devil. All that the devil was so spry in the heart, I told you. I told you, serving God. Running up and down, you see what is done for you, you are going to die. Isaiah too. And you know when Isaiah says something, that's it. That's final. When he says something, you know it is done. And before the Lord could tell Isaiah to come to you that you are going to die, you know that all the courts of heaven, they have made a covenant and they have, they have made a decision that you are going to. He said, Devil, keep quiet. I will not die, but I will live. I said I will not die, but I will live. He silenced the devil. You will silence the devil. All those negative thoughts in your mind, they will be gone. All those things that the devil is trying to tell you, do you see now, do you see now, you're going to die and, and, and this is your last year here. You say, no devil, keep quiet and the devil will be silenced in Jesus' name. Number six, spared from dying. Spared from dying. He was spared from dying. He was spared from dying and you are spared already. I said you are spared already. You will not die. The promises of God, the goodness of God is upon your life. Number seven, he secured deliverance and dominion. He secured deliverance and dominion. He secured deliverance and dominion. And that's what the Lord is telling us, that the word of the Lord is, a sh is sure. And the word of the Lord is certain. And all the promises of God are yes and amen for every one of us. And we're going to get the fulfillment of the benefit of the promise of the Lord in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. In Job chapter 5. Job chapter 5. Reading from verse 17. Job chapter 5 verse 17. Behold, happy is a man whom God corrected. Therefore despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. For he maketh sore and bindeth up. He woundeth and his hands make whole. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven thou shalt, there shall no evil touch thee. In farming, he shall redeem thee from death. And in war, from the power of the sword, thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. Get ready for verse 22. At destruction and farming, thou shalt laugh. You will laugh at the devil. You will laugh at your enemies. You will laugh at destruction. You will laugh at famine. You will laugh at unemployment, at destruction and famine. Thou shalt laugh. Sorrow will not end your life. Weeping will not end your life. But laughter will be the very center of your life. Destruction, death, disease, famine, whatever thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. You will not be afraid again. The Lord has set you free, and you remain free in the Lord in Jesus' name. In Psalm 145, I'm reading from verse, reading from verse 17. Psalm 145, reading from verse 17. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and he is holy in all his works. The Lord is near unto all that call upon him, not only to Ezekiel. Ezekiah called upon the Lord and the Lord showed by his immediate answer, his instantaneous answer, that the Lord was near unto him. And the Lord is assuring us here that the Lord is nigh, is near unto all that call upon him. And to all that call upon him, in truth, he will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He will fulfill your desire. He also will hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserves all them that love him. Not only some of them, all of them. All of them. It's not only Ezekiah. The Lord fulfills. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He will hear when they cry. He will hear when they call. He will heal. He will deliver. He will save. And the Lord will preserve all them that love him. But all the wicked will he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. And everybody said, Amen. I come to point number three now. The cure total cure and healing 
to, not partial cure. What kind of cure are you going to have today? Total cure. Total cure and healing. We come to that uh, covenant again in um, Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. And we're looking at it in verse 26. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, then he says, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. How did they know that it was true? Oh, because they remember now. When Moses told them, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which are brought upon the Egyptians. Oh, yes, they said, I will remember, we remember. Because when all the darkness came upon the land of Egypt, the place in Goshen where we were living, even before we came out, there was no darkness there. And when all the flies and the, and the lions, when they came upon the Egyptians, the Lord separated us. The Lord set us apart. We understand what the Lord is saying. Because the Lord of the wicked shall not fall upon the righteous. And the Lord is just saying, what I did for you, even when you were in the land of Egypt, and you were about to come out, even when you have not totally come out, and you were there, and the man had not totally released you, all the calamities I brought upon them, all the infirmities I brought upon them, all the judgment and the wrath I brought upon them, I spared you. Because you're my people. Let my people go. You're my firstborn. You're my son. And I spared you at that time. I'm telling you that what I started to do, I'm going to continue to do. And I will keep on sparing you. I'll keep on protecting you. I'll keep on pre uh, preserving you. I'll keep on separating you. And I'll keep on putting you apart like a special treasure unto me. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which are brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that he let thee. I am the Lord that he let thee, and you have got it in Jesus' name. The Lord is telling us that the promises of the Lord are yes and amen. The conditions are there. And if we are born again, we actually fulfill those promises. Because if we are born again, the word of God is our delight. If we are born again, if we are children of God, then we want to obey the word of God. If we are born again, the grace of the obedience to the word of God is given unto us, and we are obeying the word of God. And he says, when we're doing that, by his grace. When we're doing that, in the strength of the Lord. When we're doing that, every day, a little at a time, a day at a time. Then he says, that righteousness will then produce for us the riches of the kingdom. In Isaiah chapter 57. Isaiah chapter 57. I'm reading from verse 18. I have seen his ways. And I will heal him. I will lead him also. And restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. The Lord says, I've seen his ways. He told me, remember. And then I went to my records and I've seen, I've remembered. I see how this man, Ezekiah, and I see this person, the believer, the servant of God today, is walking according to my word. And because of that, I will restore comforts unto him. I will lead him. I will heal him. And then I'll grant him peace. I create the fruits of the leaves. Peace, peace to him that is far off and to him that is near, says the Lord, and I will heal him. What a promise the Lord has given us. He says he will heal. He has started already. I said he has started already. In Isaiah chapter 58, reading from verse 8, Isaiah 58 verse 8, Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy health shall spring forth speedily, thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be the rear word. Then shall thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, and the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity, the condition comes here again. If you live righteously, and you don't get involved with false accusation, falsely accusing your region overseer, falsely accusing your state overseer, Wanting to displace him, wanting to drive him away, and wanting to wanting him to lose his ministry. If you remove the pointing of the finger, and if you stop doing evil to the leadership, to the leaders in the church, and to the people of God, and also to other people too, if you will not continue pointing those accusing fingers and doing evil to the people of God, so that they will lose their ministry, then he says, I will heal you. And I will answer your prayer. In verse 10, if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry. And satisfy the afflicted soul. Then shall thy light rise in obscurity. And thy darkness as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually. 
I said the Lord will guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones and thou shalt be like a watered garden like a spring of water whose waters fail not and they, sh and they that be of thee shall build the old waste places thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations I thought I needed an amen there. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach. The restorer of paths to dwell in. Look at verses 13 and 14. This is very significant. Here, uh, there are some people that are missing the blessings of God because they don't have the right attitude to the day of the Lord and the day of worship, the day of fellowship. It says in verse 13, If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy own pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him. Not doing their own ways on the Lord's day. Not doing their own ways. There are people that are hurting themselves because they're doing just what they like on the Lord's day. And sometimes they are not there on the, on, in the service. And some, even though they, you know, they might be leaders, and uh, you know, in this day of uh, satellite, uh, they might just tell somebody, stand there for me. You know, stand there for me. The message is coming through a uh, satellite, therefore you stand there. And then they are at, they at liberty. And they are here and there. And they are not really very sincere with themselves to take in the word of God. But the Lord is saying, if you want the blessing of the Lord, you must be there. You know it is the day of the Lord. Whether it's for the Bible study or revival hour or power night or whatever it is. Even it is not only when you are preaching that you will be there. Even when you are not preaching, you are faithful because you say, this is the day of the Lord. And I'm going to make it honorable and shall honor him. Not doing their own ways, not finding their own pleasure, not speaking their own words. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord. I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. You are going to be blessed. In Jeremiah chapter 33, Jeremiah 33, and I'm reading from verse 3 and then from verse 6. Jeremiah 33, reading from verse, reading from verse 3. The blessing of the Lord for some people call unto me. And I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. It says, I'm going to show you great and mighty things which you don't know in verse 6. Behold, I will bring it health and cure. And I will cure them. I will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. Any question then as you think about the total healing the Lord is promising us. And you link that up with Ezekiah's case. The healing of Ezekiah. What do we find? Number one, truthful hearts. Truthful hearts. And as you look at all these references that we're reading, you see that's what the Lord is expecting. That if you want the blessing of the Lord, the healing of the Lord, the total cure and the healing and the blessings of the Lord. Number one, there is the truthful heart. Number two, transparent honesty. Those are the conditions. There's transparent honesty. And as you look at the life of Hezekiah, and Hezekiah is saying, Oh Lord, check up your record and see and remember me and remember my ways. Transparent honesty. Number three, transformed habits. You see, if we expect the blessings of the Lord, we become conscious of ourselves in the sense that we're conscious of our action, we're conscious of our habits. We're conscious of what the Lord expects. And then whenever any problem comes, we can, there'll be no guilt, there'll be no, there'll be no condemnation. The Lord will not be, you know, saying, you remember I told you to honor the day of the Lord, did you? I told you to honor the worship of the Lord, did you? I told you not to do your own ways in the worship, in the fellowship, did you? And I told you that you must respect and honor me. When the people come together and they come to exalt my name, and you must not do your own way, you must not go your own way, you must have transformed a bit, did you? But if you have been transparent, and if you have been truthful, if you have been transformed, you'll be able to say like Ezekiah, with confidence before the Lord, Oh Lord, remember, number four, teachable humility. Teachable humility. If you have checked up the record of Hezekiah, you will see when he, when he was faced with battle, and then the enemy kings came against him. Enemy, enemy, powerful people, mighty people came against him. It was this Isaiah that came to him and said, Hezekiah, the Lord is on your side. The Lord is going to answer your prayer. That man was humble and teachable. Teachable humility. And even when he made a mistake and after his healing and um, he got the, the people, the other kings uh, from the foreign land, they came to greet him and he showed him everything that he had. 
And then Isaac came to him, the prophet came to him and said, What did they see? He said, They saw this, they saw this, they saw that. And then as God pronounced a rebuke and correction on him, oh, he felt humbled. And he said, Well, the Lord is even good and gentle. He has moderated the punishment and the correction that he said it will be all right in my days. He had teachable humility. And as you are following the Lord and following the ways of the Lord, that's what the Lord is suspecting. That number one, you have a truthful heart. A truthful heart. A heart that is following after the Lord. And you're standing upon the truth of the word of God and you're not deviating. A truthful heart. Number two, you're having transparent honesty. Your honesty is not something that you are honest when we're there. You're honest because the auditors are coming and they're checking the records. You're honest only when you say, okay, if I do this, this will be going too far. They will discover this one. They will know my name. They will know that I'm the one that did this, perpetrated this evil, whether they will discover it or not, you have transparent honesty and then you have transformed habits. The things I used to do, I do them no more. And the thing, the places I used to go, I go there no more. And the Lord can check up the records. He will see that I have transformed habits and, and teachable humility. And when you are corrected for something, you will not swell up and you will not raise up your shoulders. And you will not look at us, the leadership in the church, and, and feel, where are you coming from? Are you still correcting us like 1974, 1975? Don't you understand that this is, you know, another kind of modern time? If you are a real child of God and you're expecting the blessing of God, there will be teachable humility. Then, number five, there will be time-tested holiness. Time-tested holiness. That in the passage of time, your holiness will be a time-tested holiness. It will not just be a, a holiness that is passing away. Holiness that is, you know, not stable, not there. Time-tested holiness. And that's what we'll find in Ezekiah here. And that's why I was able to stand with confidence upon the watch of God. And I was able to say, oh Lord, remember the kind of holiness I have. It's not a kind of wishy-washy, superficial, uh, hypocritical holiness. It is the time-tested holiness. And then a tenacious hold. Number six, tenacious hold tenaciously holding on to the promises of god i will not let this one go i am a child of god i am a servant of god i'm a king in the land and the king must have of course the promises must come from the king and then go to the people and because i'm a real child of god a servant of god a king in the land i must have the goodness of god upon my life you'll be holding to the promises of god and those promises of god will be yes and amen in your life the promises of god will not be something you're not able to hold it firm with the hand of faith because you have confidence in the lord and because you know how you have been living in the lord there will be this tenacious hold to the watch of god we're told in first john chapter 3 first john chapter 3 and i'm looking at verse 19 in first john chapter 3 verse 19 you will see what gives us the confidence what gives us the boldness of faith you will see what gives us the tenacity, the tenacity that we're able to hold on to the promises of god without letting it go in first john chapter 3 i'm reading to you from verse 19 first john chapter 3 from verse 19 it tells us and hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him for if our hearts condemn us condemn us god is greater than our heart and knoweth all things beloved if our heart condemn us not if our heart condemn us not as we look at all our actions and we look at all our habits and we compare our habits our action our disposition our character we compare it with the word of god if our hearts condemn us not we look we check up the commandments of the lord if you will do anything akin to the voice of the lord your god and you will keep his statutes and you will do that which is right in his sight and then we say i'm going to take inventory i'm going to evaluate i'm going to examine myself because the lord says examine yourself whether you be in the faith or not and as we examine everything then you see that by the grace of god the grace that brings salvation has appeared unto all men that teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly laws and that we should live soberly righteously and justly in, in this world and you say by the grace of god the spirit of god is bearing witness with my heart i have lived like he wants me to live if our hearts condemn us not as we look at the doctrines we preach and our hearts condemn us not and we look at how we deal with the finances and the money in the church and our hearts condemn us not and we look at the responsibilities that the lord has given us and we're faithful through and through and our hearts condemn us not if our hearts condemn us not 
then have we confidence in him to confidence toward god and whatsoever whatsoever we ask we receive of him because we keep his commandments and we do those things that are pleasing in his sight well you understand then what the lord is expecting and what the lord wants us to really settle the foundation number one truthful hearts number two transparent honesty number three transformed habits number four teachable humility number five time tested holiness number six tenacious hold number seven triumphant hosanna triumphant hosanna you are able to say thank god because i know i i triumph in the lord greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world and because of the confidence and boldness i have and because of all the promises of god that are yes and amen to me i know i am triumphant i said we are triumphant and we are more than conquerors in jesus name and then there will be a triumphant hosanna on our lips even this morning in jesus name will rise up now you'll check off us you'll check off us so that you'll be able to tell the lord oh lord remember oh lord remember check up do you have a truthful heart have you been cleansed from sin and then are you truthful in your heart and truthful in your life in everything you do are you truthful in the statements you give us are you truthful in the records and the data you send to the headquarters are you truthful in the money that you record are you truthful and in all your responsibilities are you truthful check it up check it up and before you can pray like ezekiah you must check up you must tell the lord check up in your record O oh lord and see what my record is a truthful heart a truthful heart a transparent holiness a transparent honesty rather transparent honesty check up your life i want you to check up now you don't just stay there and, and be looking because you have to make this foundation and this basis and you have to be very very sure in your heart in your heart in your personal life it has to be there transparent holiness transparent honesty transparent honesty check it up check it up are you doing the work of god are you like Ezekiah? Can you tell the Lord like Ezekiah told the Lord oh Lord remember now how I have walked before thee a true heart a transparent honesty a transformed habit habits are transformed are they your lifestyle we're not there with you what you do is it transformed are you teachable teachable humility when the overseer corrects you you then find another way to rebel and disobey and to prove to the overseer we are beyond correction now don't talk like that anymore don't correct us anymore don't look over what we're doing anymore we're beyond that now are you like that are you going to be like Ezekiah then are you going to be able to say Lord remember Lord remember teachable humility that's what it takes time tested holiness do you have it your holiness is it time tested Your holiness is each time to stage. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. That's what Ezekiah had. And because he had that holiness, holiness in him, holiness in language, holiness in life, holiness in lifestyle, holiness in everything he did, that's how he was able to tell the Lord, the Lord, remember now. You see, he was standing upon the conditions and the terms of the covenant that the Lord had given him check it up in your own life check it up in your own life how is your life do you have the time tested holiness in your family and outside your family in the church and outside the church when the members of the church are not there when the members of the church are there what kind of life do you live you see ezekiah checked it up evaluated it and then he went to the lord and said lord you must remember i am not like that i had to have the fulfillment of the promises of the covenant and then he had a tenacious hold upon the promises of God. And those promises never failed. He had it and you will have it. If you have checked up and you can tell the Lord like Ezekiah told the Lord. You can say, Lord, remember. And if there's anything wrong anywhere in your personal life, then you can tell the Lord, oh Lord, cleanse me, wash me, purge me, purify me, sanctify me. And the Lord will do it. And then you can then come on the ground of the confidence that holiness gives us. And you can come before the Lord and say, Lord, remember, you have 
cleansed me, you have washed me, you have poured me, you have purified me, you have sanctified me, you have set me apart, and I'm going to do your will, I'm doing your will, heal me and deliver me and bless me and it will, then there will be a triumphant holiness, a triumphant hosanna, triumphant hosanna, triumphant hosanna, that will triumph in the Lord, and then you'll be able to say, praise the Lord, yes, we'll feel this promise in my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give me a good amen. amen. If you are like Hezekiah this morning and you know that you will live, you will not die. You will be well, you will not remain sick. And the promises of God will be yes and amen in your life. Stretch up your hand. It's a hand of victory. It's a hand of triumph. You will be triumphant in Jesus' name. Amen. But remember holiness and healing. Remember holiness and health. Remember holiness and happiness. Remember holiness and hope. It is a holiness that gives us the hope. And we're sure that once we're on holiness ground, on the ground of holiness, confidence, the Lord will build up and our faith will not be disappointed in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we come to you today. We know that you are a mighty God that will never fail. I come on behalf of your servants, of our brothers, of our sisters, of the children of God, the people of God. I'm asking, oh Lord, that you will fulfill the, the promises of the covenant for everyone in Jesus' name. They will live, they will not die. They will succeed, they will not fail. They will be triumphant, they will not be defeated. They will conquer, Lord, and nothing evil will conquer them in Jesus' name. Lord, all the diseases of Egypt, all the diseases of the world, healing them. We're hearing news of this and news of that. Oh Lord, this morning, we're canceling from the children of God, from the people and the servants of God. In Jesus' name. I pray that the healing virtue of the Lord will pass through your body right now. All the sicknesses, all the infirmities, and all the attacks, and all the causes, and all the yoke. I break them in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, we're asking that for every brother here, for every sister here, you'll come in your power. You'll come in your mind. You'll come by your spirit. You'll come through the power in the name of the blood, of the name of Jesus, and you will destroy the works of the devil in Jesus' name. I pronounce your people healed. I pronounce your people well. I pronounce your people victorious. I pronounce your people triumphant. And the shout of praise will be in their mouth in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray in the midst of them, in their kidney, in their heart, in their blood system, in their brain, in, in their bones, anywhere there's any sickness, oh Lord, in the reproductive system of their body, I command that sickness, come out in Jesus' name. And all the things walking about in the body, don't you know that that is the temple of the Almighty God? You have no right to be there. And I command you right now, will be authority of the Spirit of God, the power in the Spirit of God, and the name of Jesus. I command all those walking objects, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I cancel failure from their lives. I cancel barrenness from their family. I cancel miscarriages from them. All the powers of the enemies waging war against them. All those enemies turn back from the people of God in Jesus' name. From now on, brothers and sisters, you are victorious. You are triumphant. You are healed. You are well. No evil will come upon you again in Jesus' name. This year, accidents are cancelled from your life. This year, calamities are taken away. This year, sorrow and crying and weeping are taken away. This year, it will be the joy of the Lord. And the joy of the Lord will be your strength in Jesus' name. You will leave this place and be victorious. You will leave this place more than a conqueror. You will not be bedridden anymore. You will do everything that you need to do. And you will be everything you ought to be. And the might and the power of the Lord will, be, will live big in your life in Jesus' name. You declare with your mouth you are well, you are well. You declare with your mouth you are alright, you are alright. You declare with your mouth everything is okay, everything will be okay. Oh Lord, confirm the words and the desires of your people in Jesus' name. Thank you Lord because we know it is done. It is done. It is done. It is done in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you believe it is done? I said, do you believe it is done? Put your hands together and rejoice in the Lord. Because I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. And it is well with you. No more sickness. It is well. I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. 
the yokes are broken it is it is well i believe 